It may come as a surprise to no one that metal can be slippery. But when snow falls on a metal roof, it doesn't just clear off immediately. Instead, it creates an ever-growing blanket of snow that sticks together and bonds to your roof. When that bond weakens, it can evacuate quite suddenly in the form of a snow avalanche, which could mean trouble for anything located below your eaves. So what can be done to alleviate this problem? Stick around to find out the answer to that question and much more as we sit down with a true expert in this field, our CEO and founder of S5, Rob Haddock. How do snow avalanches form and what triggers them? What are the hazards associated with these events and how serious can they be? And what exactly are snow guards and how do they help solve the problem of snow avalanches? All that and more today on Insights with Experts. So winter is upon us and with that means the snow is coming too. So let's talk a little bit about what that means for metal roofs. What exactly is a snow avalanche? How do they form and what exactly triggers them? Well, a snow avalanche is a lot like a ground avalanche. Sure. What happens is that there is a downward force as snow builds up on a roof. The weight of that snow, it's one huge mass on a roof, so it's all kind of glued together. And that downward force translates into a vector force, also known as gravity loads. Um, or drag loads, all those terms are pretty synonymous. But it's this force turning into a vector force or a drag load sliding down the plane of the roof. The snow presents a force to the roof in that direction. As the snow builds up on the roof, there's this bond that's actually, you know, it's a freeze bond of the snow blanket to the roof. And so that's why it doesn't just slide off as soon as it hits the roof. And what happens next is that when the sun comes out, the rays of the sun shine through the bank of snow. Now, okay. these are the invisible rays that warm objects, okay? And the blanket of snow is somewhat translucent, and those rays pass through the blanket of snow and start warming the roof below. Now, this can happen even when ambient temperatures are well below freezing because it's the roof below which is insulated now yeah. by that blanket of snow and it's getting warmer from radiant energy from yeah, the sun. Absorbing all that temperature, yeah. And it warms up to a point above freezing and now that snow blanket where it's adjacent to the surface of the roof right, yeah. starts to melt and thaw. When this vector force exceeds the resistance in the adhesion of the blanket to the roof, it lets go. And it lets go typically all at once. It can be a rather dramatic kind of effect. And it could result with a disaster. It depends what's below the eaves of the roof. It can damage expensive landscape. It can damage roof elements like gutters and other Absolutely. roof flashings and yeah. things like that. In addition to that, it can be a pain in the neck. <laughs> I mean, because you may have cleared the snow. Freshly first shoveled thing sidewalk. in the morning, Great. cleared the sidewalk, cleared the driveway or whatever it is. And uh, as soon as you're done, uh, that snow lets go and now you've got even more to clear. And I mean, there's even been fatalities associated with this too, all around snow country. I mean, it's a serious, serious thing. There are fatalities year over year. A heavy, wet snow, Patrick, weighs somewhere approaching 15 pounds per cubic foot. That's incredible. Okay. If you have a blanket of snow on your roof that's two feet deep or three feet deep, and, and it weighs 15 pounds or even 10 pounds and three feet deep, that's 30 pounds per square foot. So do the math of the size of your roof, yeah. multiply by 30 PSF, and that's the amount of snow that's evacuating that roof when that thing lets go. So let's talk about ways that we can stop this then. This is something that we know a lot about, something that kind of we got into business doing, and that's snow guards. Uh, obviously goes by numerous different monikers, snow bars, snow fences, but for our purposes, maybe we'll just kind of stick with snow guards here and say, uh, what are they? How long have they been around? I mean, how do these things alleviate the problem of snow avalanches off of roofs? I've been all over the European and, and North European and Bavarian Alps and yeah. so on. 
and seen some very old structures that incorporate snow guards, as you put it. They might be logs back in the day. They sure. were logs or stones placed on the roof. What they're, what they're doing in each case is, as the snow is, is exerting this force against a, a, a stop of some sort, yeah, sort yeah. it begins to compress. It, it densifies. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And so it's becoming more and more dense the closer it is to the, to the stop there. Sure. The yeah. Snow guard. And so the snow guard interfaces with that dense part of that snow blanket. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And holds the whole blanket in place. Because remember, once again, that blanket is kind of one mass. Yes. All yeah. Right. And it has sheer thing. strength. It has compressive strength and it has adhesive strength. Yeah. We figured out our own snow guards, our own system for retaining the snow. Let's talk a little bit about how we came up with our design. We rarely use logs anymore in, in modern architecture, and we don't use stone as much anymore. <laughs> Go figure. But the principles are the same. So there are two types of snow retention or snow guard systems. Yeah. One are continuous rails, as, as we see here, yep. and those are the type that that our company produces. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other type is an individual analogous to the stones now. Sure. It's an individual something that's placed there. It, yeah. it, it kind of peppered all over the Sure, roof. just spread across. Or in rows, but staggered or whatever, yeah. kind of randomly placed. Now we only use the continuous rail type mm -hmm. system or continuous fence, you might call yeah. it because we believe it's more it's more calculable it's more predictable in its behavior sure than yeah. individual cleat devices and all our systems are mechanically attached sure yeah and i know some of those single ones that are spread across those can be done with adhesives and sometimes adhesives don't work so well <laughs> on metal roofs in cold weather well yeah regardless of how well adhesives work um, initially, they don't work well over time. And when we're mounting snow retention systems to a metal roof, we're mounting to a roof that has an expected service life of anything above 50 years, Absolutely. all the way up to 100 or more. Yeah. And, and so we want that system to last and perform throughout the service life of the roof. And that's why we use mechanically attached. Adhesives degrade with exposure to hot, cold, ozone, moisture, UV. Most of the roofs, when, when they're steep roofs, they're painted. So it's a paint film that they're stuck to. And that paint film is, is not designed to have that kind of stress no. put on it and the paint delaminates and rips off off the substrate, off the roof. How does it exactly help then alleviate the problem of snow avalanches? I know obviously we've got something that's going to create some friction, you know, help compress that snow, but then how's that snow getting off there at all? How does that work? The objective is to immobilize the snow so that it doesn't evacuate suddenly in the form of an avalanche. Yeah. It does evacuate eventually through both sublimation and thaw. So if, it, if it's thawing, remember the sunshine is still hitting that roof, warming the roof, and there's ambient air temperature comes up and there's a natural thaw process that goes on. And when that happens, of course, it's turning to liquid water and it's evacuating the roof sure. as water. Snow also sublimates. That's a fancy word for passing from a solid state into a gaseous state. Sure without ever entering into a liquid state. Okay, yeah. And snow does that. So it, it sublimates even when temperatures are quite cold. Does it have to be installed directly over a supporting wall? What's the, what's the process of installing them on a metal roof? Um, well, it's actually a misconception that they have to be installed over a load-bearing wall beneath. They're normally installed as close to the eave as is practical, but there are some out there who, who advocate that got to be over a supporting wall. So if you, if you have a four or a six or eight foot overhang, then you come up six or eight feet or wherever that wall is yeah. from the eave and install your first line of snow retention there. That's nonsense, but the misthinking behind it 
is that all the snow is going to pile up right at the snow fence. Sure, right? in one spot. Yeah. In one spot. And that simply doesn't happen. Snow blankets a roof, and as we've already discussed, it's a very monolithic mass. Yeah. So it has great adhesive strength within itself, and it bonds to the entire, it's one big mass. The designer of the structure doesn't normally assume that snow is going to come off that roof. It's designed to withstand what is called the design snow load for that area, for that roof, and so on. Yeah. That's based on normally a 50-year reoccurring event, so a really severe event. And then there are safety factors involved also with the design of that structure. It's wrong to presume that snow is just going to point load a roof at the eave or anywhere else yeah. and that the roof is going to collapse. It's evenly spread. It's a fairly uniform load. As it's melting then too, I know some people wonder like do snow guards cause ice dams at all? What how does that how does that happen? No, that's another misconception. It's a popular one. The real cause of ice dams is that the roof temperature differs from upslope to downslope. When the roof is warmed from building heat loss through the roof assembly, that's where there's a danger of ice dams because that heat loss through the roof upslope warms that roof to above freezing, and this is when it's well below freezing outside, that meltwater runs down to the eave, and the eave is subject to that colder yeah. outdoor temperature. Substantially colder. And it refreezes. This is what causes ice dams. So it's just something that can happen with or without a snow guard on it. Has, it has no correlation, clearly. <laughs> exactly. None at all. And we're going to hit the brakes on this discussion for now, but there's still more we need to cover. Next time, we'll dispel some of the other common misconceptions associated with snow guards. Rob will also talk about some of the key things to be aware of when you're looking for the right snow guard system for your roof. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss part two. And if you got any questions or requests for upcoming video topics, remember you can just drop us a comment below because we'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.